Okay, so today we're going to be looking at using Photoshop for the iPad to create double exposures and wet plate simulations and the like. Now, Photoshop um, for iPad does require a small subscription fee, but I would highly suggest getting it because it is an industry staple for anyone going into photography or any sort of graphic design. And while it is very slimmed down, the version that's available for the iPad, it's a great introduction to what the desktop version of Photoshop looks like because a lot of the symbols are the same, the layout is pretty much the same, the way it functions even at a basic level is the same, so it'll help you kind of tackle what is very much a beast of a program but is so versatile. There's so much you can do with Photoshop once you start understanding even just the very basics of how it works. Um, you can do a lot of these same things with the Adobe Photoshop Mix, which is, nope, I don't have a download right now, but it's one of the other free apps that is available. But the Photoshop app here is definitely the most versatile, so this is what I'm going to be showing you how to work with today. Okay, so we're going to start off with just a fairly basic double exposure. So to do that, we're going to open a file. And there's two ways to create a file in the Photoshop app. Either you can create new, which allows you to set the size and the um, resolution of your image. That's what PPI stands for, points per inch. So this is a print resolution, whereas something along the lines of 70 points per inch would be a um, web resolution. But we're not going to worry about any of that right now. We're just going to directly import an image and start with that as our base of the document. So we'll go to camera roll. And we're going to start off with this image. Now when you're selecting images to create double exposures with, you're going to have the best luck if you work with an image that has a plain background. And for this type of style, you're going to need a plain white background. Now you don't have to just use a plain background or just a white background, but there it's the easiest way to start approaching the concept of a double exposure. So for this one, see you've just got a figure against the nice uh, white background. I've already done all of my editing and retouching in Lightroom and um, all of that. I also turned up the highlights and the whites, especially when I was doing that editing, so that our background stands out very clearly against the dark clothing. So the next thing we're going to do is decide what image we want to overlay with this. So to do that, we're going to go over here to the image icon, click on that, go to the camera roll again, and I think I want to play around with this sunset photo right here. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that it at least covers the entire surface of our original image. Click done. Okay, well it's not doing anything yet, so how do we get those two layers to talk to each other? That's where blending modes come in. So you come over here to this little slider bar icon, click on it, come down you'll see the title blending options. Now, blending options means how are the different layers, so that's these guys here, the different images or layers of painting that you have stacked on top of each other, how are they talking to each other? So if you come here, it says blend mode. It's currently on normal, which means they're not talking to each other at all. They're just being stacked on top of each other like a piece of paper. But if we instead click on one of these, they will interact differently. So for example, multiply. That basically blends the top layer with the bottom layer in such a way that it looks like it's on the surface of it. This is really excellent if you're trying to make um, a piece of paper look like it has a drawing on it or put a label on something. And it can be useful for photos. It's actually kind of a cool effect right now. The only thing is it will darken the image because it multiplies the pixels against each other. So as you notice, the face of our, our model is a little bit darker. Not terribly dark because we've got kind of a light blue sky, but I don't really like how kind of burnt this bottom part is looking. And what I want is to just have this sunset in a particular area of the image. So what I'm going to scroll down to here is a blending mode called screen. So what screen does is it works kind of like a, a layer mask and it reads either how light or how dark the pixels are. And it uses that as the formula for allowing the layer underneath to show through. So if a pixel is black, then 
it doesn't show through at all. If a picture, pixel is pure white, then it shows through completely. So click on that, and there you go. So as you can see, um, areas where our bottommost layer are darkest, it's showing through here, whereas these white areas, and not as much. Okay, but that's still not exactly where I want it to be. I don't really like how you can still see sort of pieces of the bottom image in these bottom corners. And I don't know if I like the, the strong black line along the bottom. So first off, I'm going to change this top layer here. And I'm going to move it down. As you can see, then it's not overlapping the top, the bottom image all the way. Let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. I like the way the pattern of the clouds is working there. Okay, so and I'm gonna turn the opacity down just a tiny bit. There we go. Now we need to figure out how to get some of these weird edges like that to blend in also get rid of the things on the sides here so the easiest way to do that is to make sure oops that our bottom layer is as white as possible the background at least where we want these pixels to be blotted out we can do that so we come here so I'll turn off this layer for now so you can see this little eye that turns the layer on and off, doesn't do anything to it, just makes it invisible. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gradient in the image. As we go down towards the floor, it's farther away from the light source, so it's a little bit darker. It's not really pure white. So the thing we're going to do here now is we're going to create what's called a... Uh, mind blanking. A clipped adjustment. That's what it's called. So, uh, let's see, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so we're going to click on these little ellipses down here on the side. It says Add Clipped Adjustment. And we're going to change the brightness and the contrast to bring up some of those whites. Okay, so we want these whites as white as possible. So we're just going to look at the whites, we're going to ignore what's happening to the face. Get these whites really brightened up. To turn up the contrast as well, kind of darken out that jacket because that's where we're going to get some good uh, texture from the overlaid image showing through. Okay, but now we've totally lost all the detail in the face, it's really overexposed. How do we bring that back? Well, we're going to use what's called a layer mask. So you noticed here we have this the adjustment layer, which means that it's a layer that's talking to the bottom layer, and we have a white box next to it. Now this white box is called a mask, and you can create one of these next to any layer. And basically it masks off or hides certain parts of the layer that you want hidden. At the moment it's completely turned on, so there's no parts of the layer that are hidden, but we want to hide some of this adjustment. It's kind of like doing the uh, selective adjustments tool on Lightroom, same concept. Okay, so we're going to come over here to the brush tool, so just the basic brush. Um, we want to make sure it's on black because that will hide it. I have a really big, so big as possible, as soft as possible. So we don't want a hard brush, we want a soft brush. And we'll turn the opacity of the brush up so it's pretty much as dark as it goes. Okay, so now I'm just going to slowly start coloring in the areas that have gotten a little bit too overexposed due to that adjustment layer that we created. There we go. She's looking like a person again. But we have a nice clean background. And our darks down at the bottom have gotten a little bit darker so they'll really pick up on the overlaid texture. Great. Okay, so now let's turn on the topmost layer and see how that's changed for us. Voila! Okay, so it's gotten rid of the kind of hanging edges.
edges there for the most part. Now, as you can see, there's still just a tiny bit of it showing through. So the way that we can fix that, and the way we can fix like this portion up here where we're doing some weird stuff. Oops, zoom in. Okay, here we go. So we're on the bottom layer here, and basically we just want to make this area even more white than it is. So we're gonna switch to white, make our brush a little bit smaller, still keep it soft. And we just lighten up that area. The other thing we can do as well is if we come over here, click on this layer, we're going to create a layer mask. So we're going to go down to this little guy that seems looks like a Japanese flag, click on that. Now we have a white box next to the image layer, so we've created a mask. And the reason you create a mask instead of just simply erasing portions of the layer is because then if you do something you don't like, you can go back and change it as many times as you like. Whereas once you've erased, if you go too far forward, you can't backspace. You can only backspace a certain amount of times before the computer stops saving the information. Whereas a layer mask, instead of deleting the pixels, it is just turning them on and off. So it's called non-destructive editing versus erasing, which is destructive editing. Okay, so we are on the black with the paintbrush. It's going to make go but as you notice we got a little bit of oops darkness there now so we're gonna make our brush a little bit smaller switch back to the white there we go nice even colors and exposure So now, let's address this top part that looks a little bit overexposed and that weird line we've got going at the top. So what we want to do is we want to hide some of the overlaid image so that our uh, model at the bottom can show through. So again, we're going to switch this to black, really big brush. I'm just kind of slowly brushing down the image to create a gradient so that it's kind of fading into the bottom image. Pay special attention up here to the this weird line we've got going on. There we go. The line is pretty much gone. Just going back and forth across the image and nice clean strokes. Okay, and then I'm going to do just a little bit of a stroke down towards the hands. Bring out the hands just a little bit more. Down through the center of the jacket just a tiny bit. Touch up any spots that I feel like are weird and blotchy. There you have it. Our double exposure image. Okay, so now we're just going to save this. So you can say I usually save it as JPEG. Make sure it's at the highest quality possible, and export. So let's go do another one. So again, we're just going to import and open, go to camera roll. Oh, good. Let's see, go here. This time we're going to do a wet plate simulation. So basically look 
make the image look like it's an old wet plate or old film printed on paper. So we're going to use this photo I took this last year myself. Never let a good Halloween costume go to waste. Okay, so we've got our base image. Now when I'm trying to antique an image, you know, do a wet plate simulation, I always start with a base layer that makes it look like it's printed on old paper. So for that, I'm going to go here to my images. And I've slowly over the years built up a collection of high quality JPEG files, either things that I've bought off of stock websites, things that I've scanned in myself, things that I've just come across other places, and I have them all saved in a folder on my computer. So here we have a high quality image of some kind of splotchy paper. Rotate. There you go. It doesn't need to be like perfectly straight because we're just going to put this behind here. Okay, we want to make sure it covers the whole image. If you need to stretch it a little bit, that's fine because it's just going to be adding texture. It's not really going to show through super clear. Great. Okay, so it's covered our whole image area. Done. Now we want to move it to the bottom of the stack. What we're going to do with this guy now is we're going to change the blending mode. And this is where we can use that great little multiply setting. So it makes it look like it's printed onto this old paper. Now, I don't really like how yellow this old paper is. So I'm going to add a clipped adjustment, hue and saturation. I'm just going to turn the saturation down just a little bit so you get a little more of the texture rather than just the yellowness. Okay. Now we're going to start adding some layers on top to continue to build up this sort of vintage worn texture that we want. Come back to the camera roll. We're going to add on a wet plate overlay. Actually first, let's do one more paper overlay, or underlay I guess. So I've got another paper texture here. And this one has a little bit of sort of a asymmetrical vignette on it. It'll make the edges look like they're kind of torn and unevenly exposed. Great, and that one just happens to line beautifully up with the composition of the image. Just fine tuning my corner there. Perfect. Okay, now I've got this really beautiful old paper texture here. But it still feels a little bit too clean and sharp to be an old image, so let's really amp up the texture. With that, we're going to go to one of these guys. So let's do this one right here. like that. Now we're going to move this one on top and we're going to use the screen blending mode again. Okay and as you can see that's very dramatic much more so than we probably want it. So just turn down the opacity which is how see-through it is until it gets to a point we like. Okay great. So I really like where that's at. There's some sort of like a weird splotch there that I maybe don't like how it's coinciding with my forehead. 
So again, we can just make a layer mask. And just very lightly Which layer this little spot is on? Okay, whoops. It's definitely on this topmost layer. Just lighting it up just a bit. And don't like that, it's a little bit too dark. Okay, so we're gonna go back. The other thing we can do, if turn this back to normal, that's why. Okay. Just kidding. Um, so we're gonna turn. So we're on the topmost layer. I've turned the blend mode back onto normal, and instead of masking off this little piece that I don't like, I'm just going to color the overlay a different color. So I have my paintbrush, medium sized, soft. I'm just kind of making this area a flat sort of grayish color. We can even use the band-aid tool on it. Oops. To just kind of touch up that area. Great. Okay, so now I'm going to turn blending mode back to screen. And oh, zoom out. There you have it. Okay, so we're just going to save this one now. Well, first, before we do that, I notice there's like a weird edge here. I figure out where that is. Okay, so it's on one of the back layers. Looks like that edge is coming from this layer right here. So I'm going to select this layer, stretch it out just a tiny bit, get rid of that edge. There you go. There you have it. So that'll save our high quality file. And you're done. So the great thing about the Photoshop for iPad is it creates Photoshop files that are compatible with the desktop Photoshop. So if you do have a laptop or a PC and you want to do a little bit more complex work on the desktop version of Photoshop, you can get started here and it will build the document for you and then you can either upload it to the cloud or save it to Dropbox or something like that and open it on a computer. Okay check my battery really quick because I think it was telling me it was trying to die on me. Okay, we're good. We can make it through. So our last one, we're going to open up another file in this guy right here. Okay, so we're going to combine some of the things that we just saw with the previous two examples. So this one, I want to get this paint texture along the bottom here. So say we want it right about here. But the problem is because the top part is white, not black, when we try to apply it as a screen, it does the opposite of what I'm wanting it to. And it blocks out the top part and allows more of the bottom part to show through. So what we need to do is invert that image. And unfortunately, Photoshop doesn't do that on the iPad. 
what Photoshop Express does. So if we go over to Photoshop Express and we open up this file, I'm going to crop it down because I really don't need the whole thing. I just need about, oops. that much there and there we go we'll do that okay so now we're going to go over to filters and oh it's under basic so if you hold go to basic and you hold down and then over here there should be a filter called invert basically it turns the pixels inside out Make sure that's nice and strong. Export that to your camera roll. And now we can go back to the full Photoshop. Okay. So we're going to delete that layer. And add the inverted file we just made. Okay, I'm going to grab my charger, because it's not lasting as long as I thought it would. Okay, crash my husband's workout. for a few more minutes. So now we're going to expand this drippy layer. There we go. Like it right there. I like how those drips are lining up kind of with the lines in the hair. Done. So now we're going to switch that layer on to screen mode, like so. Problem is, we've got this really wonderful texture going on on the bottom half here, but the top half, there's really nothing that's been done to it. So I'm going to add this guy right here. So another one of these. Sort of wet plate type overlays. So we're going to change the blend mode. Go with the screen on this one as well. Okay, actually let's try, yeah, we'll do the top one as an overlay. Great, so now all we need to do is get rid of this ugly line between the two of those layers. So first of all, I'm going to tone down this overlay just a tiny bit so it's not quite so obnoxious. Then I'm going to go to my drippy layer and I'm going to create a layer mask. And I'm just going to sort of blur out the edge. Nice big soft brush. Just kind of work along the edge here. To blur it out so that it blends. with our top texture. So I'm just kind of working along the seam here that I'm trying to get rid of. There you go. Now I'm going to create a layer mask for the overlay layer just because I want to tone it down just a tiny bit in a few of the areas 
over the face. So I'm just gonna tap, basically just tapping. I'm not even like brushing. I'm just tapping over the areas where I want to tone down this layer. And there you have it. So we're gonna save this now. Okay, so let's open up our camera roll and look at the pieces that we've just made. This one, so it's not in the way. Our combination of kind of some wet plate and double exposure, is more of kind of a modern interpretation of the wet plate technique. Here we have a little bit more of like a faux vintage finish. And more of a traditional double exposure. So like I said, each of these uses very similar concepts and techniques, just slight variations, and you can take these concepts and apply them in an infinite amount of ways. So for this assignment, I want you to really get creative. Um, if you want to kind of recycle some of your old shots, that's fine. If you want to go out and take, you know, completely no photo to work with, that's also great as well. Just keep in mind that, especially when you're starting off to try to master these, it's a lot easier to work with an image that has a nice clean background. So think about that as you're selecting photos and have fun with it.